Hello Nidorinars and Nidorinos, it is King Nido here and today the Glaciado Nordics are looking to win their first game of the season. They are still unable to get a victory, but they will have the type advantage over the four tree tempers who are currently sitting in eighth place on the leaderboard. They want to try and work their way up into an elite four position, but let us know in the comments today who you think is going to win. Will it be the ice types? Will it be the flying types? Let's go! Three. As I said, the Ice Types do have the type advantage, but it will be Decidueye and Talonflame starting out for the Fortree Tempest. It'll be the pseudo-legendary back Scalibur joined by Cloyster on the side of the Nordics, and immediately Decidueye in its Hisuian form will shed its Fighting Grass type and become a Flying type Pokemon. Spectacular form does it take, and it's been having a really good season. It's gonna wanna look to continue that here today, but first Talonflame goes for the Hydro Steam, on to Baxcalibur, surely they're going to want to get that pseudo-legendary off the field, but unfortunately that was a not very effective attack. And Baxcalibur responds with the double hit, and these two hits combined get great damage there onto Talonflame, but it activates the flame body onto Baxcalibur, which is going to leave it burned, and it's going to cut into its attack stat of 145 base, as Cloyster is going to set up for the Solar Blade. It's going to absorb the light on this turn. It will be a not very effective hit on the next turn, as the entrainment from Horlucha onto Baxcalibur. It is going to get rid of that ice body and change its ability to Overgrow. I do not see it benefited benefiting Baxcalibur too much, having more powerful grass type attacks. As Talonflame with the Seed Bomb on the Cloyster, super effective, capitalizing on that part, Water type in and Baxcalibur follows it up with the Heat Crash in response on the Talonflame, not very effective due to that part fire type that it has, but here is the Solar Blade from Cloyster onto Horlucha. Gets an okay hit for a not very effective attack, but this does allow Horlucha to respond with the Water Spout. This is going to hit both Ice types. It does more damage to Cloyster, but it is not very effective on either of them as Baxcalibur continues to feel the effects of that burn status condition and Talonflame going for the payback onto the pseudo legendary, trying as hard as it can to get rid of it on this field. Baxcalibur yet again responding with the Aerial Ace this time, and Cloyster following it up with the Revelation Dance onto Horlucha. Great hit there with that move, and Horlucha responds with the Belly Drum, but it doesn't have enough health to sacrifice to maximize its attack, so it does fail as Baxcalibur yet again still feeling the effects of the burn. Talonflame with the bind here on the Cloyster, making it so it will take continuous damage from that bind from Talonflame. So Cloyster is going to take the bind damage. Baxcalibur will take the burn damage as it goes for the extra sensory onto Horlucha, which is followed up by the Aerial Ace onto Talonflame from Cloyster, getting the elimination. But yet again, Talonflame's flame body ability is activated. So now Cloyster is also going to feel the effects of that burn. Horlucha now going for the Dragon Claw on the Cloyster, putting it in range for the burn to take it out of this matchup. It surely needs to hold on. It won't be by much if it does, but it is able to hang on. So Cloyster is still in this matchup for at least another turn as Neuvern comes out for the Four Tree Tempest and immediately goes for the Leer, which is going to lower the defense here of Cloyster. I do not think it matters with that burn. It's about to take it out. Backscalibur also having its defense low. Goes for the Fire Spin here on the Decidueye, and Decidueye is eliminated. The Glissado Nordics have actually gotten the first two eliminations here as Cloyster going for the Thunder Punch, capitalizing on that part fly, flying typing. Unfortunately, the Dragon typing does prevent it from being super effective. And here is Cloyster feeling the effects of that burn. It is taken out of this matchup. That Flame Body, very crucial for the Four Tree Tempest as out comes Avalug for the Glissado Nordics. And it's Braviary coming out for the Four Tree Tempest. Noveron still with the speed advantage. It goes for the Esper Wing on to Backscalibur. Great hit there. It's also going to boost that already impressive speed of Noveron Backscalibur. Responding with the Water Shuriken. This is a multi-hit move, but it is doing very minimal damage to Noveron here. It's got three hits. It's got four. It will only get four of the not very effective move. Unfortunately, very little damage being done there as Braviary. Going for the high jump kick, and this will eliminate Baxcalibur with that super effective critical hit. The Fortree Tempest have leveled the playing field here. Avalug looking to change that, goes for the heal pulse, and does the complete opposite, but Bravio is at full strength, so it has no effect. And out comes Cryogonal for the Glissado Nordics. Neuvern 
with the Teeter Dance is going to leave every Pokemon on the field except itself confused, which means even its own teammate, Braviary, has become confused. It does not want it doing damage to itself. It would like for the Ice types to do that, I am sure. So it is a bit of a gamble to play that move, but here is Cryagonal trying to shake off its confusion, and it is able to. It goes with the Sweet Scent, which is going to lower that evasiveness of the Flying-type Pokemon by a great deal. See if anyone goes for a one-hit KO move as Noivern and Braviary are looking very strong on the field at the moment. Braviary, unable to shake off its confusion, though, is going to do damage to itself, unfortunately. Avalug wants to shake it off, surely. And it is also unable to. So for a 50-50 split is what Noivern gets from its confusions. And now we get the sky attack. Noivern becoming cloaked in that harsh light. The wings flying up into the sky. Kragonal is still confused. Three out of the four Pokemon on the field trying to shake it off. And Kragonal this time is unable to shake off its confusion. Braviary still also confused. Surely it's got to be able to shake it off. Noivern wants to see it shake it off. And it is successful going with the scale shot. On to Avalog. This multi-hit move is going to lower the defenses of Braviary. It only hits twice, but it is going to boost that speed. I wonder if it will be able to move quicker than Cryogonal in the coming turns. That could be a crucial play here as Avalog is able to snap out of its confusion already on, after only one turn. Goes with the play rough on the Noivern and a super effective elimination. Puts the Glissado Nordics back in front at the midpoint of this matchup. And out comes Killer Watcher for the four tree tempers. Very, very still confused. Unfortunately, it is now the quickest on the field. And yet again, it does damage to itself. Looked like it actually did more to itself that time than previously. Killer Watcher is going to go for the double team. So it's actually going to boost its evasiveness here. So we have the boosted evasiveness of Killer Watcher, the lowered evasiveness of Braviary and Kragonal still also confused, is able to shake it off. It goes with the withdrawal, so it's going to boost its defense here. And Avalog follows it up with the Mud Slap, but the Flying Types are immune to Ground Type moves, so unfortunately it won't affect Braviary, who's finally snapped out of its confusion. And it does go with the Sucker Punch, but unfortunately this does fail in the Poker Type League. And Killer Watcher looking to follow it up with the Mystical Power onto Kragonal. Okay hit. Unfortunately, not doing enough, but it will boost Killer Watcher's special attack. Killer Watcher has that 105 base special attack. 125 base speed, in fact, so quite a very, quite a speedy Pokemon. As we get the Yawn from Cryogonal, trying to put Braviary to sleep. We'll see it grow drowsy on this turn, fall asleep at the end of the coming turn. But first, an Acid from Avalug hitting both Braviary and Killer Watcher for minimal damage. As we get the Gastro Acid that is going to suppress the ability of Cryogonal here. And that will be the last move that Braviary does before it falls asleep. But now we have the Smackdown being laid on Avalog. Super effective hit there from Killer Watcher. It doesn't actually do a great deal of damage, but Kragonal has finally snapped out of its confusion. Going with the Sludge Bomb onto Braviary. And Avalog has an opportunity to follow it up here. Goes with the Metal Burst. Looks like it goes for Killer Watcher. Good hit there. And here is Braviary finally falling asleep on the field. It's still actually flying in midair, so it's very impressive to see that flying bird taking place as Braviary fast asleep, unable to go for a move. But Killer Watchel in its place goes for a Reflect type. It's going to become an Ice type, copying the typing of Cryogonal. Same thing would have happened though if it copied the typing of Avalog as it is a Collusion Avalog. The slam from Cryogonal though will take out the sleeping Braviary. The Glissado Nordics have a 4-2 advantage at the moment, and we get the Charge Beam from Avalog on Killer Watchel. That electric typing preventing it from being super effective, but a special attack boost for Avalog as out comes Iron Jugulus, and Killer Watchel is going to go for the Parabolic Charge. This will hit everybody on the field. It's super effective, unfortunately, on Iron Jugulus, but Killer Watchel is going to get a lot of health restored, especially thanks to what it took from Iron Jugulus. In fact, it actually gets itself back to full strength, not even needing the health of Kragonal, who is on the receiving end of a Torch Song from Iron Jugulus. That super effective move has eliminated Kragonal and boosted the special attack of Iron Jugulus. Avalog, with the Calm Mind here, you feel that Calm Mind take place. Let it wash over you as it boosts its special attack and its special defense here now. It is more of a physical Pokemon, so it probably needs to boost them more. But so Titan comes out now for the Glissado Nordics, and we get the Bullet Seed onto Avalog. This multi-hit move from Killer Watchel. I do not think even five of them would be enough to take out Avalog, and it only connects twice. This Iron Jugulus is going to follow it up with the Drain Punch. This is super effective onto Titan, and that is really intelligent because Iron Jugulus has just restored some of the health that its teammate Killer Watchel took from it. So... Both of them are actually getting stronger on the field as the Grass Knot will not be very effective on Iron Jugulus from Sir Titan, so it doesn't do very 
much damage. And it's followed up with the Aqua Tail from Avalog. The Kilowatchal is able to avoid allowing it to go for the fly. It's going to fly up high into the sky. So it will be unhittable in the coming turn. As the Fire Fang from Iron Jugulus, another super effective hit onto Sir Titan here, putting it within elimination range. And Sir Titan with the Thunder onto Iron Jugulus, super effective elimination. Killer Watch is all by itself, and it has three Ice types to contend with. Go Avila goes for the Sacred Sword. There's no one to hit, but the Ice types massive advantage. Killer Watcher with the Fly though takes out the Titan. It's now a two v one game. Maybe the Tempest is still in this matchup, but Avila with the Fake Out is going to fail. And out comes Bear Tick as the last Pokemon for the Glissado Nordics as Killer Watcher immediately with the play rough gets a good hit there onto Bear Tick, who responds with the struggle bug trying to do a little bit of chip damage to killer watcher who was at full strength to remember so killer watcher does have its special attack lowered avalog follows it up with the heart swap the glissado nordics need to keep on the offensive they are within range of getting their first victory here killer watcher though with the flamethrower eliminates avalog with that super effective hit we've gone from a three versus one down to a one versus one bear tick though with the dig now remember, Killer Watchel is now an Ice type because it copied the typing of Cryagonal, so that dig will connect. Killer Watchel preparing for it though, going with the defense kill. It's going to boost its defense, make this dig do less damage, and it's still a really good hit there from Bear to Killer Watchel. Though he's going to respond with the skill swap. This is going to swap their abilities, that Wind Power and Swift Swim being swapped between Killer Watchel and Bear Tick, respectively. But still, this is anyone's game, and Bear Tick with the Accu pressure. It is going to boost its defense a great deal here. Killer Watch will keep it on the offensive. Going with the pluck gets a very minimal hit, but does steal that Leopard Berry from Bear Tick. Proceeds to eat it. Must need that energy because it has already taken down those two Ice type Pokemon. Bear Tick is going to respond though with the Esper Wing. Gets a good hit here, but Killer Watch will still holding on. Bear Tick boosts its speed, but it's not quicker than Killer Watch who responds with the Water Pledge. And Bear Tick is eliminated. The Fortry Tempest have come back from a 3 1 disadvantage to prevent the Nordics from getting their first victory. And the Nordics still on the bottom of the leaderboard. 0 oh, and 7, and next round they will be taking on the Holon Heroes, whereas the Tempest moving themselves up into an Elite 4 position, and they will be taking on the second place Heart Home Spectres next round, but until then, Nidorinos, Nidorinos, thank you so much for watching, let us know in the comments below who you thought was the best on field, and if you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, share, subscribe, but more importantly, always remember, you are awesome, and I'll see you when you see me.